So this is the last presentation, so I really hope that everybody is sleepy enough and uh, will not recognize my language uh, mistakes. I am not an English native speaker. I have some Kyrbanyol show aspect, so excuse me. IoT. It's a very interesting topic because everybody is talking about IoT, but uh, almost nobody knows what exactly the IoT is. Uh, I hope it's not that situation. Uh, I would hate my cafe machine if it uh, would do that. Let's see the definition. It's very short and uh, uh, the most interesting part is that uh, there is no IP address in the definition. That means, uh, in this case, uh, IoT means internetworking operation. Have you heard about that? It's a, not a very new product. First, it was introduced in uh, 1958 by Mr. Amdal at the IBM. Uh, he decided uh, to be machines able to communicate without any uh, strict network protocol, reading each other's storage and writing to the storage of the other machine. That was the beginning, and IoT is a good uh, continuation of that. So, we have a lot of gadgets, uh, seems to be IoT, but not all of them an IoT system. Uh, we should decide what is the difference with the, between a simple remote control or a Bluetooth uh, device or a remote control or play console or, for example, a heat consumption measuring system. The major difference is uh, that IoT devices has an authentication module, so between the sensor, the actuator, and the communication unit, there is a very strict uh, authentication. And uh, it's not necessarily an IP address. It can be any unique identifier. For example, at the mobile phone systems, the email number, it's a very long hexadecimal number, a very strong identifier, and uh, it's not an IP address. There are several ways uh, to communicate for an ID, uh, IoT device. It depends on the distance you should reach and the data uh, amount you want to transfer. The smaller the data amount, uh, the smaller the distance, you need lower uh, power devices, uh, less sophisticated devices, and uh, less sophisticated authentication. We know the Wi-Fi use, Bluetooth, and uh, we can use the cellular network as well, but we can use radio communications, and uh, this is the most uh, slippery area of the IoT devices. Uh, I think uh, Nokia is a well-known uh, manufacturer and uh, they can offer several ready-to-use devices for IoT communication. And uh, you can choose uh, according to your speed request and uh, distance request. And uh, out of the box you can buy it and you can use it. The problem is that there are so-called uh, ISM uh, radio bands, non-licensed radio bands, without any rules. 
the only rule is your power is limited and you can do anything in this band. This is uh, the available technologies for uh, the I, uh, ISM band use. And uh, this is uh, the board there, uh, which devices we want to deal with and which devices we don't want to deal with. If we are using uh, Wi-Fi, uh, the device will be registered in the network. It will get an IP address. The network administrator must know that IP address, must allow to connect it to his network. So I don't want to deal with that group because that's the task of network administrator. If uh, somebody tries to use uh, a mobile network, you have to have a contract with the mobile service provider. You will be registered. You will be identified. And the service provider will be responsible for your activities and the availabil availability of the network. So in this case, I also don't want to deal with that group. If you want to use a licensed radio band, for example, in uh, Budapest, uh, the central heating power plant uses uh, a frequency band in uh, 833 megahertz. They have a license. The central uh, support they have from uh, uh, the National Communication uh, Surveillance fa uh, fam uh, Facility. And uh, that band is protected, so if you try uh, to transmit any radio uh, signal in this band, uh, you will be arrested in a short way. So in this case, uh, due to its registered band, I know the user, I know the targets, and I have the proper protection of the band, so I don't want to deal with. An interesting uh, situation is uh, E.ON, its uh, electricity supplier in Hungary, and there is a very famous uh, radio antenna in Budapest, Lucky Head Torony. Uh, it's famous about uh, its size. It's uh, 100 times higher than the value of pi, 3.149 meters, 3.145 meters, and E.ON uh, rented the tower, and they uh, transmit uh, control signals for the central European power plants. The most critical part is uh, uh, the ISM band. I would say there is no rules in the ISM band. You can do anything. Industrial, scientific and medical use, you can test everything, you can uh, uh, try any idea. The only limit is the transmitted power and the ERP. What does ERP mean? If you have a transmitter and it uh, transmits the signals all around the world, for example, for one watt, and you connect an antenna and limit uh, the direction of the radiation, on that direction, the equivalent power will be much higher than the original one watt. For example, if the so-called antenna gain is about uh, 20 decibels, uh, the radiated power on that direction will be 100 watts or equivalent. These are the available uh, ISM bands in Hungary. And uh, due to the worldwide trading, there are several Chinese units 
arriving in Hungary not complies with this frequency table. So if you scan the band, you can find very strange devices, and those are also IoT devices, and you have to know where they are and why they are and what they are doing. This is on the layer one, because the radio frequency communication is a layer one communication, and uh, it has several uh, problems. I think the major problem is uh, that uh, you can uh, initiate invisible attacks, because you can listen the band, store enormous amount of data, evaluate it offline, and when you want to take a real attack, you can use that pre-processed uh, amount of data. The other one is the lifespan of the power supply. Uh, if you want to use an IoT device independent from the network, independent from the main uh, supply, it, it must have a battery, and the battery size is very limited, and uh, that means the lifespan can be uh, short. Easy to hard, hide the device, easy uh, to replace or uh, change it, or substitute it with another uh, not identified uh, system. And if you sniffed the network for a long time, you can have uh, the identifier and you can uh, read it, and you can uh, write to the substituted machine. A couple of years ago, the analog devices, it's a semiconductor manufacturer, tried uh, uh, to initiate a new project, integrating a PKE system to the IoT, but uh, that about 10 or 15 minutes higher price, 15 uh, persons higher price uh, was too high for the market and uh, they couldn't uh, accept it. So, a very simple IoT device, uh, indoor outdoor thermometer. It needs authentication because you don't want uh, to read the next building's outdoor temperature. You would read uh, your value from your garden. The indoor unit periodically asks for data. Uh, in my device, it was five minutes. And for the, that request, the outdoor unit replies uh, with the, the exact temperature value. It's a very simple system, very useful, that uh, I think it's not so dangerous. This is uh, the heat cost allocator system. Uh, in several houses, uh, there are small devices measuring the heat usage. And uh, in the building, there is a so-called concentrator, which uh, periodically asks for the actual value and stores the actual value. <coughs> The concentrator works uh, with main supply, but uh, in the metering unit there is a very small battery. The battery life is about uh, 12 years, and uh, the regular uh, swap time is uh, 10 years in Hungary. It's a two-level IoT because in the first step, every meter unit uh, send the data to the concentrator, and uh, later a radio car goes along the street and squeaking continuously uh, request signals, and as a reply for the signal, the concentrator will send 
all of the collected data to the radio car. And the radio car will uh, store it and deliver it uh, uh, to the accounting system. It's very useful, but it's dangerous because you can attack the concentrator. For example, you can uh, send a false request signal for a concentrator, and that will delete all of the registered data. That means that it, it then has uh, UV heat free of charge because all of uh, the using of the heating is uh, lost. So, if you want to gain control over a device, first you have to find it. If you don't know about the device, you cannot control it. So, if you want, want to find it, you have to catch the communication. And if you manage to catch it, uh, you can locate the device. How can you catch a radio uh, communication? For example, listening to the radio. Which one of the radios uh, are the proper one? I would say none of them. If you uh, listen to a radio transmitter, uh, you can find the continuous signal. This is a, a stereo radio station, Bartók Radio Budapest, and this is a mono radio station. The central uh, signal, so-called carrier, is an exact frequency, and there are so-called sidebands according to the uh, data modulated to the carrier. There is another interesting line. This is uh, the stereo uh, pilot signal, which made the receiver switch between right and left hand amplifier. On the club radio, there is no stereo pilot because it's a mono radio. But if you try to listen to an IoT device, something is missing. There is no uh, continuous carrier. We also have a frequency allocated to that unit, and there are very small pot, spots. These are the request signals, and these are the response from the other device. So it's uh, very hard to find that tiny bird, very hard to recognize that it's an IoT device, and very hard to catch it. So the handshake signal is almost invisible. In that uh, figure, you almost cannot see the signal. If I uh, switch to a larger screen, here is the request signal and here is the response. Here is the response sig request signal and the response. The handshake is almost invisible. But if you use a so-called uh, software-defined radio, it can be natively connected to a computer, and it will be able to catch the signal, and it will be able to loop the all ISM band in one screen. SDR radio uh, doesn't contain any uh, resonant circuits or well-known filters from the normal radio. It uses uh, fast Fourier transformation uh, to select the appropriate signal. And I would say the higher the available computer capacity, the more exact will be the detection. In my system, I use uh, uh, that uh, RTL-SDL receiver with SDL Sharp program. It's a very light version of uh, the SDL control program, so you can use it in any Windows or Linux environment. 
but also can use uh, the HDSDR. It's much lighter, so it can run uh, on old Windows 2000 machines or so. So, this is the communication. This is the screen of uh, uh, the SDR Sharp. This is the frequency of the actual communication and the parameters you used to detect it and uh, uh, evaluate it. The SDR uh, receiver is like this one. It's about uh, $40 on Alibaba, so not so expensive. Now you can see a handshake. This is the request for data, and this is the data. <coughs> data request, data transmitted from the IoT device. In this screen, you can see a three-block transmission that was in a house uh, in a flat which has three uh, heating cost allocators and uh, the concentrator asked for data three times, and the three concentrators replied with data. The frequency is the same all of the three devices. So uh, the way we can distinguish them is the unique identifier. Now, you have the frequency and the periodicity. Uh, you only have to find where your device is. There is an old school method with a directional antenna. The only problem is uh, during one single burst, you should be able to turn around in 360 degrees, otherwise, you will not find it. So you should be as fast as the Maxwell daemon. So it's a bit hard task. The other way is the time difference method. If you have one transmitter and several receivers around, the same signal will arrive in different time to the receivers. If you synchronize the receivers and measure the time differences, you can calculate the exact location of uh, the IoT device. If you are interested in this, there's a very uh, good uh, uh, article. It's a dissertation of a guy, and uh, the whole mathematical background is uh, described very well and understandable. So it can be good to find one transmitter, but it's not the proper for uh, covering a larger area and finding every uh, IoT device is communicating on that area. So uh, the perfect solution is uh, the phased array. Phased array is developed for radar systems and it's a combined set of tiny dipole areas. And by changing uh, the phase shift between the areas, it can turn uh, the beam and the receiving direction electronically very fast in some microseconds. That means that the phased array antenna can swap around in some 10 microseconds. So if you want to, to protect a larger area and uh, you want uh, real reliable solutions, this is expensive but uh, bulletproof solution for that. So I think uh, IoT is uh, <coughs> rather large area, 
a rather interesting area and rather dangerous area. Dangerous because uh, the radiated power is very small, the peri periodicity is long, the signal uh, length is very small, so it's very hard to catch, very hard to find, very hard uh, to involve control the device. So in this case, if you want a professional solution, I would recommend uh, the phased array systems, and you can rely on them. Otherwise, uh, it's only a good toy and nothing more. <laughs>